week on the Autocar Show, we bring you Mahindra's Verito Vibe. Ford's EcoSport with a 1.5 diesel motor. The Carrera 4S. And Hormuz brings you lots of news from the auto industry. Hello and welcome to the Auto Car Show. Is it a hatch? Not really, because it's got a boot. Is it a saloon? Well, not quite, because it looks like a hatch. Well, this is Mahindra's take on the sub 4 meter. Now, we've seen a lot of sub 4 meter saloons where the boot is added on. This one is quite different. Let's take a closer look at the vibe. Now we've seen regular sub 4 meters like the Swift Desire and the Amaze where a boot is integrated into the hatch platform. But the vibe is quite different. There's no tailgate as you saw but the area below the rear windscreen opens to reveal a 330 litre boot. However loading things into it will not be easy as the opening is quite small. Apart from this the vibe looks quite the hatch. The rear is steeply raked with the tail lamps mounted on either side of the glass area. It also has a large boot which is broken by chrome garnish with the Mahindra logo, a dual tone bumper and a crease line that runs through to the sides of the car. From the front, the vibe could very well be the Verito. It has the same boxy shape with the only difference being a carbon finished front grille. On the inside too, it's exactly the same as the Verito. The dashboard is identical with the dual tone colors, the tuned in music system with the USB and aux ports and the AC controls lying below it. The steering however did not have height adjust and neither did the seat which could make it a little difficult for taller people. The Vibe will be offered in three variants with the top end getting the music system, the electric outside rear view mirrors, alloy wheels, body colored mouldings, fog lamps, airbags, ABS and EBD. Under the hood, the Vibe is also powered by the same 1.5 litre Renault diesel from the Verito. Power and torque figures also remain identical. There is no petrol as M&M did not have a 1200cc motor that would help them avail of the excise benefits. For a 65 bhp engine, the Vibe feels surprisingly good. I'm going to slip the car into third, come down to about Let's bring it down quite low, 1000 RPM, put my foot down and it still gets a move on. So very drivable engine, it's going to be easy in city traffic. Although when I have the open track like this in a straight stretch of road, I realize it doesn't really have a top end. However, you can cruise at about 120 quite comfortably. So very, very drivable in city traffic, this one is going to be really easy. Although if you find a straight stretch of road, you'll realize that the top end, not really great, but it still cruises quite comfortably. This engine is not the kind that you want to push to the red line. It encourages you to upshift early with the power dying out at the top end of the rev band. It's a car for comfort driving and the engine refinement adds to that. The cabin feels insulated to all other outside sounds as well for a car this size. The engine is made into a 5-speed gearbox that's easy enough to use but feels a little notchy when compared to the Japanese competitors. On the go we found that the cabin felt spacious and airy and the front seats were quite comfortable, although I would have liked a little more lumbar support. There's loads of storage areas but the central console sits a little low, making the lower switches not so easy to access. There's also a very irritating reflection of the defog events in the center of the windscreen. But other than that, the front end visibility is good. 
the Mahindra track also gave us the opportunity to test the cornering abilities of the Vibe and we came away pleasantly pleased. The grip of this car is good. It makes you feel confident. It just doesn't let go. It's quite nice. The Vibe grips the road really well and the steering though not razor sharp was still quite good and felt well weighted. There's a considerable amount of slack at dead center, but overall even at straight line high speed, the Vibe felt sure footed. Now the test track was nowhere close to our crater filled roads, but I still did try out the ride quality and the back seat experience. Back seat space is pretty good, lots of leg room, lots of head room, what's nice is the width. You have these panels intruding into the seat space but still three people is going to be comfortable because the seat is flat, the floorboard is pretty low, the transmission tunnel not too high. So the third person in the middle actually will feel like any of the other two passengers. And this pad on the door actually makes quite a nice armrest. I think this cabin will easily be the class leader in terms of space. Not only that, with the light coloured interior and large glass areas, it feels very airy and open on the inside. Well, the track is really smooth over here, so I'm not able to tell you much about the ride quality. But with whatever the little bumps and undulations, you realise that this ride is going to be quite like the Verito. Pliant, it's flat and composed. The top end vibe is reasonably well loaded and Mahindra claim a figure of 20.8 km per litre on the efficiency front. Personally, I quite like the quirky styling too and I think that in that sense Mahindra have done a great job with what they have. It's quite different. So I finally got my hands on Ford Superstar 2013, the EcoSport and I actually think this one is a megastar and that's because this is powered by a 1.5 litre diesel motor. Let's find out what it's like, shall we? Now in this case, the EcoSport has borrowed not just the platform of the Fiesta, but even the 1.5 litre diesel engine. And that bodes well for the driver. First thing, the diesel engine impresses you with its refinement. It's quiet at idle, it doesn't have vibration, it doesn't feel harsh, it's only in the last 1000 RPM of its rev range that it gets a bit loud. And even if you take that into account, this diesel motor is definitely one of the smoothest ones around in this space. Then there's the power delivery, which is quite good. Below 1500 RPM, it could be more prominent. But past that, you just find that there's a very nice, smooth, linear punch coming in. None of that sudden turbo lag. So it is very easy to use, even in Stockholm city traffic. Now when you look at the roll-on acceleration times from 20 to 80 km an hour in third gear, you'll see that it isn't particularly quick. But you can't help but feel that the EcoSport is effortless to drive. You'll be sure to appreciate the light action of the clutch when you're driving around in stop-go city traffic. On an open road, the EcoSport diesel will take 13.7 seconds to reach 100 km an hour from standstill. And that is a bit slower than a big hatch like the Hyundai i20. And its top speed of 168 km an hour is roughly in the same region too. That's not all though, the 88.7 bhp of power is actually quite useful. Cruising on the highway at 100 km an hour with the engine doing just a little over 2000 rpm can be quite relaxing as well. When you want to make an overtaking maneuver on the highway, you'll find that you'll want to sneak down a gear 
to get that extra shove of torque to make the move nice and quick. But even that has a silver lining and that is the superb 5-speed gearbox. Now this gear shift is just so satisfying. Nice throw and it has that nice mechanical feel to it which just makes it all the more better. The EcoSport may be a compact SUV, but one area where it feels very much like a car is in the way it handles. And that is a definite plus. There's only a hint of body roll when you chuck it into a corner. And even when you press harder, it remains very well poised. It's got lots of grip from that 205 section rubber that's wrapped around 16 inch wheels. It's a real treat for the driver just like the petrol version but there are some differences now the suspension on the diesel EcoSport suddenly feels a bit stiff at the front which has to do with compensating for the heavier diesel motor now normally you won't feel that stiffness thunking through unless you hit big bumps or hit a choppy patch of road where you'll find that there is a fair amount of up and down bobbing motion Other than this, the EcoSport diesel is as good as the petrol variant. It's just as good looking and this titanium variant is just as well equipped. So we've driven the EcoSport with the diesel motor for several hundred kilometers and this is what we think. Has it blown us away? Not quite, but has it impressed us? Yes, and a lot. That's because this engine really has a breadth of talent. It is very capable, feels very efficient. In the city, you'll find that it's quite easy to drive, has good responsiveness, not particularly quick lowdown in the rev range, but definitely easy to drive. And out on the highway, it's got good punch too. You can cruise at triple digit speeds without much effort, though it can feel a bit strained when pushed hard. That aside, on the suspension front, it has a slightly stiffer front suspension, so over choppy surfaces you will find that the cabin experience does get a bit bumpy but overall dynamically this is still a great car still rides well and from behind the wheel very very enjoyable overall the diesel motor complements the EcoSport package really quite well stay tuned on the other side of this break thrills and action the Carrera 4S 